tonight, fighting terror in Southeast Asia. This is no place for the faint-hearted. Point-blank shootouts are common, yet no one in the team has a bulletproof vest. And those paying the ultimate price. This will be Henry's last meal. And in Alaska, the Eagles have landed. And landed, and landed. And now to one of nature's great comebacks. When Europeans first settled in North America, there were half a million bald eagles here. By the 1960s, though, there were just over 400 breeding pairs left in the lower 48 states. A careful conservation campaign has been spectacularly successful, and soon the bald eagle will become one of the few species to get off the endangered species list. Now, one place where the eagles have never really been threatened is Alaska. There, the problem is that there are too many of the creatures, as I discovered firsthand. Alaska is America's final frontier. Spectacularly beautiful, bitterly cold. It's 25 degrees below zero at 10 in the morning. The sun's coming up, but it's more like the dawn of time than the dawn of day. One by one, two by two, the eagles are landing. They gather here at the same time every morning from December to April. There are more bald eagles in Alaska than the other 49 states combined. 50,000 in all, the proud symbol of a powerful nation. They are magnificent, and the way they look at you is a little intimidating. The United States is an incredibly patriotic place, and you'd think the national symbol would be treated with respect, perhaps even reverence. But here, some people see the eagles as pests, and there's a bitter battle. On one side, the town's most famous resident. On the other, many of the other inhabitants. And the stakes are high. For the eagles, for the local economy, for the very notion of ecotourism, which some people believe is a contradiction in terms. Right at the end of the road, on the edge of Alaska, is a tiny town called Homer. It's rugged and remote, five hours from Anchorage. driving into the center of a storm. I received an awful lot of nasty letters and nasty phone calls about this. No, I've been and down I, there and you can just see the bird excrement from all these birds that are there. There and, are a few and, people uh, in Homer that, that seem to want to uh, vilify eagles. They like to refer to them as top predators or carnivores, as if there's something that we should be afraid of. I've come here to meet Jean Keen, the eagle lady. She's 82 years old. Every morning of every winter, Jean feeds the eagles in her front garden. She's been doing it for a quarter of a century. It is a labor of love. I enjoy it all my life. And I hate to see anything go hungry. I have gone hungry, but, and I know what it's like. And uh, it, it, I hate to see anything go to waste. There's always something that'll eat it or utilize it. So that's, and I can't lay in a nice warm bed and see a bunch of real hungry birds outside. That, that would kill me, you know? <laughs> Sometimes she feeds when the wind chill is minus 40. It's not that bad today, but there's still snow on the sand and ice in the ocean. It doesn't worry the eager eagles. As they wait for Jean, some stand patiently. Others jostle and joust for a front row seat. <laughs> Then breakfast is served.
It's a decent menu, salmon, halibut, herring. Bald eagles are predators, the top of their food chain, but in the lean winter months, they're only too happy for a handout. Their reflexes are as sharp as their talons. Gene King's breakfast buffet began with just two birds and a bucket of fish heads. Word travelled quickly. Before long, scores of eagles were turning up. Now there are hundreds. Did you ever imagine it could evolve no. quite as big as this? Not in my wildest dreams. Or that I would still be doing it at 82 years old. <laughs> the eagle lady lives alone in a tiny trailer. It's covered in eagles, outside and in. Mementos from an extraordinary life. This is where I died. The mane and tail red on the horse. Why did you do that? To have it match my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Your saw, mane matched the I horse. I saw a girl that did that before. Back in the 50s, Jean was a professional rodeo rider, hanging out with stars like Jean Autry and performing stunts on horseback. And that's doing one of the tricks when I was trick riding. This is called a hippodrome stand. And this is a death drag. This is what I was doing when I got hurt. A split second changed to life. The cowgirls slipped out of the saddle. My head hit the wall and it uh, knocked me out and put me down on the ground. My back leg got between his two back legs. She was dragged around the arena, smashing her leg. Unable to ride, Jean Keen began a new career, hauling cattle in an 18-wheel truck. Now she feeds eagles, a job nearly as challenging. But basically, you just have a lot of respect for them. I sometimes have a scold them, you know, <laughs> get like a bunch of kids, but anyway, yeah, I say they're quite the group, and they're, they're a lot of fun to be around, but they, uh, you have to be careful. But Jean Keen's a tough old bird. She last missed a feed a decade ago when she underwent a mastectomy. It's not just hungry birds that flock to her garden. There are dozens of photographers hungry for a perfect picture. It's estimated 80% of the world's bald eagle photos are taken in Homer. You know, tears were just coming down my face because the first time you see this, it's just something you feel, and you can't go home and explain it to somebody. You have to feel it, experience it, I think. Well, I'm 79 now, and I plan to come back every year as long as I'm able. It's that special. I just can't describe it. It's indescribable. <laughs> Bald eagles are the only eagles native to North America. They mate for life. The birds soar for hours, thousands of metres above the earth. It's not hard to see why they're the national symbol. Across the country, eagles grace seals, stamps, coins and monuments. In Homer, though, they're also on cars, lampposts and buildings. This is the place where eagles dare, to do whatever they like. It's like something from a Hitchcock movie. The birds have taken over the town and the locals are nervous. At the pub, everyone seems to have an eagle tale to tell, mostly about missing pets. Around here, bite-sized dogs and cats are known as eagle bait. Oh, there's this one lady that was walking this little Pomeranian about that big and just come down and snatched it right off the dock. The way it went. It took her dog. Took her dog. And how did the lady handle that? Oh, she freaked out. Just totally freaked out. Just couldn't handle it. <laughs> and her husband just standing there with his mouth open. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he went and flew up on top of that church steeple and ate it. <laughs> Shops like this rely on the eagle trade. It sells everything a tourist could need in Alaska. And what would you use that for? Uh, bear protection. Bear protection? Bear protection. The bear essentials? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <That's not what laughs> and would that actually stop a bear? Yes, it will. Yeah, something like, I mean, you look at the size of, of that. Yes, it will stop it. Mainly, though, the photographers buy bait, boots, and warm clothes. Thousands of dollars worth. Gene, I would say, in our store alone, she probably easily, uh, the customers spend a good 75000 The eagle lady doesn't believe she's doing anything wrong. 
She's determined to keep going as long as possible, despite the fight. That's very upsetting to me. It turned my stomach upside down, but uh, I can't do anything about it. It's, you know, it's just happening, so I just, just go with it and see what happens. Today, she's picking up a truckload of scraps from the fish factory. The birds eat hundreds of kilos a day. There's some carcasses, mostly fish. Okay. Salmon. Is it salmon? Great. Yeah. Well, I'd usually cut them in the cod, although I'll take the cod and, and the squid they will eat too. Okay. Jean will serve up any meat she can get her hands on, even seal, bear, and moose. I've gone and gotten them and brought them back and skinned them and then butchered them up for the, for the eagles. One year we had six moose starved to death out here. A friend helps with the storing and thawing. Over the years, Jean spent more money feeding the eagles and feeding herself, at least $20,000, half a retirement fund. How quickly do the eagles go through a box that, that yeah, they size? They can go through that in less than a week. Executive Director Christy, would you uh, introduce yourself to your staff, please? Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'm Christy Tibbles, Executive Director for the Board of Game and the staff we have with us. Eagle feeding is being bitterly debated at a state and local level. Please ban the intentional feeding of bald eagles. On one side, the townsfolk who aren't keen on Jean and want to shut her down. The greatest resource that Alaskans have is its uniqueness, is a place where wild means wild. On the other, the businesses rely on tourism. I would ask the people of those who have recommended these proposals to ban eagles, have they seen those marvelous birds come in? Have they seen people's reactions? Have they seen the sense of awe and wonder on their faces? They see them. The eagle lady herself has maintained a dignified silence. I don't have a lot of political pull or a lot of money, so I can't. I can only fight it to a certain point. The ultimate ruling is a victory for both sides. Eagle baiting is now banned in Homer, but there's an exception for Jean Keane. She can keep feeding her friends until 2010. I think that's Lloyd and Mabel. It's a pair that are they're not a nesting pair, but they stay together all year round. They'll make love down on the beach, but they don't go and lay eggs. <laughs> There's no doubt she loves the eagles, but she may be loving them to death, mm -hmm. raising all sorts of questions about how humans interact with nature and the costs of a priceless experience.